All right, hey everybody. So I wanted to, for those that may join middle of this prog process, AKA this video and have missed maybe all the previous ones. Uh, what we're working on here is creating an ESP32 based development kit that also has an e-paper display uh, connected right on board. Um, I'm using this for a product that I created, um, that I previously created with a Particle P1 module. I want to switch off the Particle P1 and switch to the ESP32 and figured it might be educational, um, not just for those interested in using ESP32, but anybody interested in making a hardware project uh, from scratch and all of the steps that go into something like this. And so not only am I going to use this for my product, which oh, let me grab one. <clears throat> It's a hockey puck. It's got an e-paper display mounted inside of it. Shows player stats. Um, I'm a huge hockey fan. Washington Capitals, if you can see my shirt here. Um, uh, but I figured in addition to using it for that, it could also be used for um, any e-paper uh, ESP32 development kit type stuff. Um, so I'm gonna break a header out onto it as well. And so people could, uh, if they wanted to, use it to uh, develop again, against the ESP32 um, platform um, for any paper application. So that's what we're working on. What we've accomplished so far and what you're looking at on the screen right here is um, our printed circuit board. We have a full schematic that I went through in a previous uh, video, and we've been spending the last several videos laying out the printed circuit board. And so, <clears throat> what we've now gotten to the point of um, and again as a disclaimer i've been giving this disclaimer in previous videos i am not a pcb layout expert um, i do understand the the schematic side and the engineering side of all this i understand the firmware and software and all the stuff that we're going to write in the future in future streams on this but this is by far my weak spot so uh, if you're hopping in and you're seeing this and my pcb layout work disgusts you um, you know, instead of making fun of me, give me some pointers and tips on what I could do to make it better. Because like I said, this is this is not something that I'm um, expert in or I'm, any, I'm not even going to claim that I'm good at it. I think I've gotten it to a point where it will all work and work well. Uh, but we're going to see that out. We're, we're going to figure that out. Um, we're going to submit an order and, and see where we land on this. And so uh, what we need to do now and what I'm going to do today um, is we're going to start working on the bill of materials. So once you have your printed circuit board, you can send it off to a fab house. They can make it um, like at um, Osh Park and they'll send you the board back. But uh, then you have to mount all the components on it. And a lot of this is surface mount. Well, not a lot of it, almost all of it, except for the battery um, component right here and the USB connector is surface mount. And so, <clears throat> Uh, surface mount soldering is uh, doable and it's something that I've done before and I don't think I'd have a problem with it, but um, you'd have to go through a bunch of other steps that I'm not going to cover, which uh, include things like making a stencil so you can solder paste this, put all the pieces on one by one with a pair of tweezers, get it into a reflow oven. A lot of people use toaster ovens for things like that um, and Arduinos to like create reflow profiles. I am going to take the more expensive less maker route because uh, again i am doing this as part of like a business product that i have um and so uh, while i really appreciate the maker approach i'm going to do the the more expensive uh commercial approach which is i'm going to send it off to a fab and assembly house they're going to make the printed circuit boards as well as assemble them for me placing all those parts on they'll figure out how to get stencils for it uh, get the solder paste on they'll have industrial reflow ovens that can do all this perfectly um and so that'll save me some time but you have other options you know if you <clears throat> have the 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 layout you could fab the board and then um, create a stencil for it and and then in, uh, assemble it yourself so we're not going to be doing that we're going to be just having that taken care of for us because we got a lot of other things we need to get to writing firmware and things like that and so uh, this is the state that the printed circuit board is in um, if you come up here and you click on the little ladybug it's going to say DRC control and it's going to uh, run a check, make sure all your clearances are good that you set up in your board um, setup area. 
which um, I'll show in a second, but I can, you can see that I have problem zero, unconnected item zero, so it's passing DRC, which means as far as KiCad is aware, everything looks good and we're ready to send it off. The way you set up this stuff is here in the board setup. <clears throat> you can do design rules and they've got um, tracks and vias and widths and um, I believe there's a place to set up like minimum width and things, but I, I've used what I believe, oh, here we go, design rules, minimum track width, six mils, um, PCB way, which is who we'll be using for this, can go down to four mils, but there's an extra charge for that, so I kept everything at six mils or above. Um, it has minimum via and drill diameters and things like that that you can set up in there. I didn't really mess with a lot of that, um, but I'm passing DRC and I'm going to submit this to PCB Way. They'll also send it through a check. And if there's any problems that they can see from the Gerber files, uh, which I'll show you how to generate when we get to that point, they'll reach back out and say, hey, there's some issues that you need to fix and we'll take it from there. Um, I am ready to be done with this part of the process because <clears throat> it's not my favorite. Um, it's cool to have gotten all the way to the end and got the board uh, into this state, but I'm ready to move on to other things. So. Uh, let's mess with the bill of materials. So this is something that on my product I've struggled with because I had a, a company do the original uh, run of these. I, I did a bunch of the design. They helped finish the design up and they did the PCB layout on my original, um, you know, this, this version of the product. Um, and the bill of materials I got was in, you know, an Excel spreadsheet, which is great, but then I have to manage it in that spreadsheet. And this becomes a problem when components go out of stock or, or they go inactive and you have to choose new products. Now you're creating versions of the product that you're sending off to the assembly house and it gets hard to track. And so what I wanna do this time with KiCad, now that I've done everything myself from scratch, is I want to track all of this in Git. And so, when I send something off to PCB Way or any other fab and assembly house, it will be a commit of my repository and will have everything that I need as far as part numbers that are built right into the EDA and that I can generate the bill of materials at any point in time for, um, for the board. So the way I'm doing that, just to show you, is for every single part in the schematic, I have added two custom fields and there, there may be a better way to do this in KiCad, I don't know. But um, what I have done is I've added a description. This specifically helps me search for things in DigiKey. And then I've also added a part number. This is the manufacturer part number so that I can look them up and then I'll change them because what I need to do is when I send this to the assembly house, I have to send with it the Gerber files as well as the component list. Uh, it's a it's a slight tariff workaround as well because they'll source all of these components locally. You have two options. You can source the components yourself and then ship them to China. For me, I did that with one batch of um, previous, these products that I did before. It's really, the shipping's really expensive. I think I paid like, I don't even remember what it was. It was like 150 bucks to get a box of stuff to China, which is crazy. Or you can give... Uh, PCB way in China, your bill of materials, and they'll source all of it locally. They're not going to pay tariffs for it. You're just going to pay the tariff on it, on the, the completed item that you get back from them. And so uh, that's, that's the approach that I, I found works well. So when I send over all the files to them, I also send a bill of materials of here is, you know, uh, what is this one? Symbol properties. Oh, here it is. Reference. It, it'll say like Q1 is this part number and it'll tell you how many and then they'll source it all and they'll assemble it for me. So that's how I'm uh, going about it. And then what I, that allows me to do is I can come up here and click on this bomb icon, generate bill of materials. And it went off screen here. And what we can do is there's a whole bunch of different options here in KiCad to export it. And I think this is what I want, bomb two group CSV, I think this is what I was using before. So what this is going to do, let me grab, let's see. Uh, let, me, let me get the folder open here so I can show you this. <clears throat> oh, 
when I click this, it's going to create a few files. It's going to create this main with no extension. It creates a main.xml, which has information, and then it'll try and render it and give it to you, in this case, a CSV. And so you can see the command line that it runs. Like it's going to run this XSLT proc and it, you know, spits out your bill of material. So all I'm going to do on this is I'm going to click generate. And that's it. It's generated main.xml. And then if I come back to my files here, um, main.xml will be, and, and what's nice about that is you can then render it however you want, but I believe it's going to be main. To, okay, so this was just now rendered. And if I, I believe I could just do open with other application, I'll choose LibreOffice Calc. Yeah, okay, here we go. And so it's gonna say, you know, here's how I'm gonna import this. You just, I leave everything as the default, I hit okay. And then here's exactly how I want the output to be displayed. It'll show me, I've got capacitor C1, there's one of them, it's 10 nanofarads. Here is the footprint, the data sheet. Um, we don't necessarily need, we'll, we'll end up collapsing that column. Ooh the description which is the custom field that i added and then the part number and you can see a bunch of these have part numbers hmm, almost all of them have part numbers from when i was filling this out when i transferred it over but some of them say tbd uh, capacitors are a special scenario there is a global shortage of sur uh, surface mount capacitors so when you choose these uh, they go out of stock like every few weeks. You'll see hundreds of thousands, even millions of stock on DigiKey. Three weeks later, it'll be zero. The part will be inactive, and then you have to find a new one. This is just this has been happening for years, and something that you figure out as you uh, go through the process. And so, this is exactly what I will send to uh, PCBWay because it has all of the designators. Um, like in this case, I like how it groups them because it'll say, hey, there's 11 one microfarad capacitors. Here's all their designators. And um, we just have to pick a part number for them. And so, uh, and we don't need to send them the data sheet. They don't care about that. But um, otherwise, this is perfect. And what's really cool about this in KiCad is that you can generate it. And so from any commit, all I have to do, um, I'll probably check in the file as well just in case KiCad changes in this um, bomb export stuff changes and doesn't work. And then um, the, the general rule with um, Git repos is you should not check in files that can be generated like binaries and things like that. However, a personal exception to that is if the tool chain changes enough to where it might not be possible. Like if you go back, you know, five years, you might not be able to generate it with, because the, the, software has been updated so much, you might not still be able to generate that bill of material. So in this case, it's nice that I can generate it from any given commit, but I'll also check it in on the commit as well uh, so that I can keep track of how it changes over time. And so that's, uh, that's what we're working on. And so once you, again, the way I've done it is by adding those custom fields. Oh, I closed, I closed the calc. Let's open it back up. Standby. Open with other applications. <clears throat> so what I need to do is I'll use this and I'll actually pull it over to a, another screen here, but uh, everything that has TBD, so like C1, for example, is a TBD. I'm just gonna drag this over here so you, you don't have to look at it. Look at how minimized it went. My window got weird there. It's messed up. Okay, so C1 is probably over in here, I'm guessing. C1. So what I did is I came through every single one of these. And so now if I edit this, you'll see C1. If I scroll down, the part number I put in there is TBD. That's not, it doesn't default to that. I just put that in there so that when I did export it, I would know what parts do I still need to find uh, part numbers for. And then once I get the original version of this, I'm good to go. I will just um, add, I'll change the parts as needed. And so uh, that's it. That's what we're going to work on. I don't know why this is resizing so weird. 
Okay, there we go. Uh, so cool. Now, how do I do that? How do we pick out all the parts? Well, this is where the description comes in handy. Oh, fine, I'll move this back over so you guys can see everything I'm doing. Uh, let me, how do you zoom in LibreCalc? Can you just do Control Plus? Nope, that didn't work. Zoom down here. Okay, that's working. All right, so basically we just start and we go down the list. So C1, and this is why I put the description in. This helps with DigiKey. So I'm just going to copy the description and then I'm going to literally just do this. Bring this over here. DigiKey. <clears throat> Paste in that description. And it's it's going to ceramic 566 items like it 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 filters me down already to what i need and so <clears throat> excuse me what i'm looking for is a 10,000 picofarad which is what they do which i believe is 0 0.01 microfarad yeah you'll see the capacitance 10,000 picofarads the description may be 0 0.01 microfarad, but anyway, they're all X7R, 50 volt, um, and we just pick one of these. So this, I apparently have looked at before. You can see the stock here, 6,900,000, almost 7 million. If you come and look at this in another month, this is probably gone. Like that's been my experience. And so this does look like it's still in stock. I've had issues with trying to copy from here and paste it into KiCad because of some weird, um, like if I try and copy it right from here and control C, sometimes you'll get a weird character, an invisible character. Like, a, I don't know if it's like a UTF encoding thing. And so what I do is I just click on it. Um, it's an 08... Uh, where's the 0805, which is the, the footprint that I'm looking for, I believe. Yes. 0805, yep. And so right here, DigiKey has this cool thing where the manufacturer part number, I can just copy it from there by clicking that button, come back over here. And I'm not going to make it in the spreadsheet. I need to make it in KiCad so that this all works the way I'm hoping for. So I need to find C1 on the schematic which i know is right here and i put in the part number and then we rinse and repeat save it and we just do it over and over um, again i'm going to pull out the tbd there so i know that i've finished it and so we just go through these one at a time until we find a part for everything and so just let's do the next one kind of boring stuff i don't know if i i should keep streaming through it because it's not super fun to <laughs> watch but um 10 microfarad x5r0805 searching oh this one went straight into results so that's cool um and there's really when you look at these you know you might ask the question like well why don't i just pick the top one here um well you, you do have to look at minimum quantity on this particular one in DigiKey, you have to order a minimum of 10,000. I don't need that many, so the one right below it is normally the in quantity of one. These are the exact same part number. This is just how you bulk order it. And so, you know, why not choose this uh, Murata one over the Kemet one? And to be honest, I don't really know. Uh, I don't have, on capacitors, I, I don't know of, Murata is very popular and so I've used that before but it's not like a are you choosing between like Nike and Under Armour or Reebok here um I look at things like the quantity available so you know 379,000 versus uh 3 million now one thing that you will note like let's go into a couple of these let's go into the 300,000 stock one you'll see um lead time is 10 weeks so if you need more of these and they go out of stock, you're looking at 10 weeks. So let's look at the one with the 3 million. Uh, if we go in there and look at that one, 10 weeks. And so if you were looking at the last one, I didn't call it out, but I saw it as I was going down to copy the part number there. The lead time was 33 weeks. And so you're talking like the better part of a year if those go out of stock. So that, that might be 
uh, not, not bite me. That is something you'll want to look at if you're trying to decide, should I go with this, go with this? Just go in and look at the lead times because if one is, I mean, I've seen some of these that are over a year, you know, like 60 week lead time. So if they, if they're otherwise the same, you might go through and see one has a better lead time than the other, even if it has lower stock, knowing that you get it back in stock sooner. And so I'm just going to go with this one, 10 micro farad, 16 volt, X5R, 0.5. Again, copy. And now this is going to be a little tedious. And I've thought about this, like, it would be better, maybe. I don't know. I'm still I'm still on the fence on this. Like, I'm gonna have to make this change on C13, 24, C7, C5, C6, C8. Um, you know what? I just remembered a feature I found in KeyCAD. Never mind. I was gonna say it'd be better to just make it once here and not on all the parts, but there is a way to do that. Let's show that if I can remember how to do it. Um, because. Otherwise, I'm thinking like, oh, I got to go find C13, C24, C7, C5, C6, C8. I've got to go find all six of those and make the change. I don't want to do that. That's that's a lot of work. So how do we do that? Uh, where is the button? Um, assign PCB. No. Edit symbol fields. I think this is it. Yes. Okay. So. Let's make this bigger so that you can see it. So what we can do here is it groups them. And so I'm looking at, what is it? The 10 microfarad, there's six of them. C13 and 24, uh, where'd my window go? C13, oh, come on, where are you? C13 and 20, 10 microfarad, right here, this one. C5 through eight. So five, six, seven, eight, that's four, five, six. These, so it keeps track of all these and all we have to do is come over here and we can change the part number. Oh, there's the quantity at the very end, good. Oh, it doesn't wanna show it. Oh, come on, KeyCat. See that weird, it's trying to, I wonder if I just do it like, no, it doesn't wanna. So that's kind of a display bug in KeyCAD. It's weird. I wonder if I like just maximize it to the whole screen. Ah, it seems to be a, a GUI issue. There we go. If we just make the window big enough. So 10 microfarads, this one, I can just come in here, change the TBD, paste. Oh, come on. I copied the wrong thing. Darn it. Okay. Come back over here. This is the one that has a ton of stock. Yep. Price break. Okay, I wanted to copy the manufacturer part number. And paste it in right here. Control V. Cool. So now I change it once there, and now it changes it for everywhere. Um, apply, save. I, I should probably want to stay on top of it. Apply, save schematic, and continue. So we're changing all the part numbers. And uh, again, we just... We go through this. In fact, it's probably, you know what? Forget forget editing it over here in LibreOffice. Like this is this is what we need to export it as to send it to the um, Fab House. But let's let's say forget that for now. Let's um just edit it in here. And when we're done, we export it. This is just like editing it in LibreOffice. Um. Oh, totally like rubbing coronavirus in my eyes. I know you're not supposed to touch your face during these crazy times, but I got something in my eye. A little bit of coronavirus. Okay. So I don't think I will let, uh, I, I won't stream. Like if there were people here, I'd chat you up. We could talk while I went through all this, but since I'm here by myself, I think I'll just, you, you get the idea of what we have to do here. This will probably take me an hour most of these parts are still in stock even the ones that have part numbers i will make sure that um there is stock form and then even if there's zero stock you could still send it i did that once where digikey showed me they were out of stock but again they're sourcing this in china sometimes they have channels uh, that they can get these through or they'll just tell you hey we've got lead time and it's going to take this long to get it in so uh, i'll go through i'll verify all the part numbers i'll update every single one of them here in keycad save all that commit that and then I think in the next video, what we'll be ready to do is get the files ready. 
get all the files that we need to um, send these over to PCB Way for them to do a run for us. So um, that is going to do it for today's uh, stream. Thanks for watching. Uh, again, this, these are all the steps. It takes time, um, but you got to go through it all. And and hopefully we'll have a working, fingers crossed, working ESP32 dev board uh, when we get this. So uh, thanks uh, again, and we'll see you next time.